Hi, it's Trevor Lewis, and this is another video from the Voyager Middle School Steam Lab. In this one, we're going to use Inkscape, and we're going to do some Boolean operations. So we're going to make these two things here by using some Boolean operations. You can find all these in the Path menu. Almost everything we do for the lasers in the Path menu. This section right here are the primary Boolean operations that Inkscape will do for you. I'm going to focus on the first three. Um, these are the same as in any sort of CAD program. Uh, they have different names. But union or merge or add is right here. Difference or subtract is right here. And intersection is right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to use each one of these. And um, we're going to make these two things. They're really actually pretty fast and easy to make. Um, it's, it's a good way to, to take simple shapes and make them into more complex shapes. So I can show you real quick. So what I did here was I started with uh, a star and the word all, and over here I just start with circles. So I'm going to go through this one step at a time, but you can see that this is made out of two pieces, and that this is made out of two pieces. So let's go through them real quick, and uh, if you're going to turn these into me, make sure you save them as an SVG, because I will, otherwise I won't be able to see the, the fills on the inside. And also make sure that they're on the page. Because SVGs, when you preview them in Google Classroom, they only show you what's on the page. If you put it over here, I won't be able to see it. So let's start with this one. This one's going to show us most of the features. I'm going to start by just drawing some circles. Um, and we'll see if my circles turn out. Oh, it's there. My fill is set to white, so you can't really see them. I'm going to click a different color to make it a different color. I'm going to make these smaller circles because I made that one small. I'm going to just draw four circles, make sort of a fluffy cloud shape. Okay. Um, you can't really tell that these are all separate pieces right here, but you can tell when I click on them. Uh, let's throw a stroke in there so you can really tell. I'm going to hold shift and set the stroke to black. So you can see there's the stroke on that one, and it's set to 2 millimeters thick. I'm going to drop it down to 1, so it's not quite so thick. So you can see now not only that there are separate objects here, but you can see that which ones are on top of each other based on the stroke. So I'm going to set all those strokes real quick just to show you. And I'm going to set them all to one millimeter thick. So there's a little cloud, but it doesn't look like much like a cloud right yet because they're, they're all separate. So what we're going to do to make it a cloud is we're going to select multiple objects. And I can do that by holding shift on the keyboard so that two are selected like that. And then I can go to path and choose union. I can also draw a box around the whole thing, select them all at once, and choose path and choose union. You can also use shift to just hold down shift and click on things, multiple things at a time. So now I've got my shape, but it doesn't look like this cloud yet. Um, so let's get some of the colors better. Um, now on the color bar here, you've got all sorts of colors if you scroll over. Uh, at the beginning, you've got black through white, and you've got no fill here, and then you've got some primary colors here, but then the, we get to the others in the color bar. Another way to grab colors, though, is just to use the eyedropper here and click on a color that you want. If you hold, if you hold down shift, it'll set the stroke if you don't hold down shift it'll set the fill but you can see this looks a lot less complex and that's because what I used here was a gradient so to use a gradient there's this tool right here called the gradient tool that I'm still trying to figure out a little bit you're gonna click and drag and it creates a gradient the gradient starts from one color and goes to the other color like this so to pick the colors what you do is with the gradient tool selected you click on one of these ends so if I click on this end you can see it's set to the blue if I click on this end you can see it's set to, it looks like transparent. So if I click on white, I want to make it white. Um, that way it won't show through if I put it over the top of something. So that one is set correctly. Now the stroke, I want to set a gradient on as well. And I haven't quite figured out the best way to do this, frankly. But what I can do is I have this fill and stroke palette over here. If you don't have that, you can get to that by finding it right here in the object menu, fill and stroke. So I'm going to go to the stroke paint. And then you can see right now it's set to solid, flat color. I want to set it to a linear gradient. And when I do that, this pops up. So this bar is the same as the other bar. And I got to be a little bit careful here. I don't want it to snap to my other bar. But I can set it up as a in, in the opposite direction. So what I'm going to do is this one is going from blue at the top to white at the bottom. I'm going to go from the same color blue at the bottom and on the top. I want that to be white. Oops, I might have messed that up. Let's try that again. So I'm going to, oops, select the gradient tool, select this top one, 
I'm going to choose white from down here, and my blue is already set correctly. So now I'm almost there, right? So all I've used so far is union. Let me show you difference. How do I make it look like this? So I've got this sort of top half highlight here. Well, what I did was I duplicated. I do this a lot. So if I just right click and choose duplicate, or I can do control D on the keyboard, I have a second copy of my cloud right on top. And you can't really tell because it's right on top, but if I move it, there it is. I'm gonna control Z and move that back. And then what I can do with that is, I only want that to be on the top part. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna grab another circle and I'm gonna draw my circle right on top and I'm gonna fill it in with a color so you can tell what's going on here. Oops, I'm still set to a gradient. Let's go to my fill here. Well, that'll do. Uh, so I'm gonna set this to cut an arc like this through my cloud see that and since I have a duplicate on top I'm gonna to select both by holding shift and then I'm gonna use this other path tool and it's called difference the way this works is whichever path is on top in Inkscape that's the one that's gonna disappear and subtract away from the other one so now it doesn't really look different but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna set my stroke to none by holding shift and clicking none and then I'm gonna change this gradient the way I want this gradient to go is I want this gradient to go from on the bottom I want it to be white and on the top instead of being blue I want it to be nothing so I'm gonna click on nothing it gives that little highlight so there's my cloud let me show you how to do how I did this all star here so I started with the word all and a star and so I'm gonna just start with the word all here well here I'll type all for you grab the text tool I'm gonna type all I like all caps for this uh, I'm using a bold font on purpose I'm gonna make it bigger okay um, and then I can set the fill to whatever color I want I can set the stroke to whatever color I want those are the colors I chose and then I'm gonna draw a star on top of it by using the star tool you can change how many corners you can change it between stars and polygons here I'm gonna draw a star on top of it Oh, I was drawn from the center, I forgot. Let's see, but I can move it, and I can squish it, and I can stretch it, and if I don't like, if it's at a slight angle like that, if I tap it one more time, it turns into rotate mode, and I can rotate it, and get it however I want it, tap it again, so I can stretch it out, okay. Now, if I wanna just take this part of the all and change what color it is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate the all. So control D on the keyboard. You see how it ended up in front of the star? I'm gonna hold shift on the keyboard to select the star at the same time. And this is my last one I wanna show you and it's called intersection. So it only leaves the, the all that's on top, it's gonna to only leave the part of the all that is inside the star. It has to be in both inside all and inside the star. So you can't really tell what just happened there because it's filled in with none, but if I can set the fill, There you go. You can set it to whatever color now. And you can see it was both inside the star and inside all. So the part that was inside the star here that wasn't part of all is gone. Okay. Um, I'm going to show you one last thing uh, before I go today. And that is break apart and combine. A lot of times when you have uh, an object like this that's either a group or it's been merged together all into one object. Sometimes I want to deal with one loop at a time. So that's these ones right here. If I choose break apart, it will break them into their separate parts and then I can move them around. If I, if I choose um, to merge two objects, let's break this one apart too. So I can do break apart like this. Oops. Oh, that's still a text object. I'd have to do object to path and then I can break them apart. Actually, they need to be ungrouped. All right, so there's my A, and there's this object. If I select them both, if I merge them or intersect them, I'm changing the lines. So what if I just want to put them together but not actually merge them? Well, there's two options. You can group them so that they'll move together, or you can choose uh, combine. Combine does some interesting things. So um, let me show you on the A here. This A is actually made out of two loops. There's the outer loop and the inner loop. But if I choose break apart, 
now they're separate. They're both selected right now, but I can move them and they're actually separate objects. So I can change things individually. So sometimes that's useful to do, and then sometimes it's useful to go back and combine them again. And that'll make the, the parts that are enclosed negative space. So that's all I've got for you today about Boolean operations. Hopefully you can use that to make some interesting things out of some pretty simple shapes in Inkscape.